Okay, here's another story about the dark. Ready, set, go. One thing I realized, God showed me this too. When we think that we're in a season of darkness, we definitely don't like that. And as much as we try to trust God through it, sometimes it seems like as soon as you start to handle one thing that went wrong, bam, something else goes wrong, and bam, something else goes wrong, and bam. You know, it starts to get real old, doesn't it? Well, I remember when I was talking to a group, a group of people, and that's what came to my mind. And it was an illustration that literally ministered to me two years later because I walked right into that darkness. And in that darkness, I was losing my house. I had been in foreclosure. And it seemed to be getting darker and darker, not lighter and lighter. I didn't feel like I was acclimating to that dark at all. With all of God's grace, I still did not like it. I didn't like the pressure. I didn't like the stress. Because I really was leaning to my own understanding as much as I was trying to trust God. I was scared. Now, I'm telling you the truth. I was scared. So, you know, y'all spiritual folks can talk about me all you want. But I'm still a work in progress. And I was scared. Um, Listen. What God was having me speak about during this time was so bizarre. Think about this. Let's say it is, I'm looking at the clock if you wonder where my eyes are going. Let's say it is 10 o'clock at night. It is well into the dark of the night. You and I both know that. Even in the summer. 10, 10, 30, that's fine. Real good and dark, right? And you think, okay, the day is far spent. You are tired. You are so ready to go to bed. You are through with that day. And you think that the day is over at midnight. And here's the sad part. Midnight is a new day, right? And you're hearing all kind of prophecies saying this is a new day. The old is past. I'm doing a new thing. And you're getting all excited because God's getting ready to bring a change in your life. Glory. Anyway, it doesn't look any different now, does it? Problems are still there. The stink is still there. The stench and the nervous wrecking, the, the stress, the frustration, and the fears. Now it is midnight. Then it moves to one o'clock in the morning. Two in the morning. Do you see the sun? I don't see the sun. Nowhere. Well, where did the sun go? It's two in the morning. It's morning. We should see some sun. We don't see it that early, do we? It is just as dark at two in the morning as it was at 10 or 10.30 at night, the night before, three and a half hours earlier. I hate it. I ain't going to lie. I hate that. But you know what God wants us to remember? When the new day dawns, we don't really get to enjoy that right away. There is a thing that God calls the fullness of time. And sometimes, like with Lazarus, it seems like God is never in a hurry. When we come on, Lord, hurry up, get this thing done. <laughs> he looks at you as if to say, anyway, so now it's two in the morning. Now, this is the thing that he showed me. When that seems to be the darkest time of the night, 10 to Let's say 10 to 3.30 in the morning, maybe 10 to 4, before you actually see the sky beginning to change. That's frustrating. 
You don't see what's going on. Number one, nine times out of ten, you're probably in the bed sleeping or at least attempting to. And then the other thing that happens is there's a lot of activity that goes on in the middle of the night. There are certain insects that sleep during the day. They tuck away and hide under rocks and they crawl up in and burrow into the dirt. You don't see them in the daytime. But boy, when it's night, they get busy. They're fertilizing the soil. They're enriching the dirt. They're doing all kinds of things with the roots of the plants. And things are happening at night that we don't know anything about. But God does. So when we don't see what's going on, when the new day supposedly has begun for us, and we are supposedly coming out of the darkness, but it's still pretty dark. God is working things out on your behalf and my behalf. Trust me on that. God knows what he's doing. God knows what his plans are for you and me. He's not going to leave us hanging. He said he will never leave us nor forsake us. Remember that. He's not a deadbeat dad, baby. He's God. He's not a man that he should lie. Trust him. It may not look any different, but he's working it out. Now, let me tell you how I know that. During the two and a half years that Milton and I struggled to hang on to that house, and every time God would throw something in, a, 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 a monkey wrench so that they couldn't take the house from us. He'd throw something else in or have somebody intervene right at the right moment. And we got another three or four months and then another five or six months and then one or two months. And it went on for two and a half friggin' years and I didn't like it. I was, I felt like my brain was about to pop out of my head. But guess what? During that whole time, the economy was getting lower and lower and lower. And God worked it out. And he told me when to turn on the computer and look at the properties. And he showed me a house that had dropped by $10,000. All during this time, the prices were dropping. But this one dropped $10,000. And then we offered $6,000 even lower and got it. We got a 1,408 square foot house and a beautiful, pristine Senior gated community for $68,000. Now, you can't beat that with a stick. And Milton signed it to me. And I'm living like a queen on a pauper salary. Only God. Only God. God is always working things out. There's always a lot more activity going on than you realize. And God will bring your blessing to you if you can't get to it. Amen. Your blessing is for you. What God has for you is for you. Trust. God is not a man that he should lie. He is faithful. 